This happened to me in 1988, and you know, I'm very careful with this, and, and uh, I've had many people approach me and ask me to write a book. I've only talked about this three times. Many times I've been on TV and I haven't, I mean, I just hinted to it a little bit, because uh, I had a wonderful experience. All my life, growing up as a child, the Lord was close to me. Now, I didn't know that. I had encounters with God. I didn't understand that. And um, all I ever wanted it was a God that I could talk to. If he was really real, sure. then let me talk to him. Yeah. But I went into the preaching ministry, to make a long story short, in, uh, in 1988, I was doing a, a, a revival for Magnolia Christian Center in Magnolia, Arkansas. The pastor was Paul Trocle. And I was preaching a, a Sunday through Wednesday meeting, a four-day meeting. And I had many encounters with the Lord. I've seen angels. I, I, I never forget about four years before that, I had pre I was preaching. I preached in 21 churches in seven days. That's three different churches a day. And I was Mercy. having chest pains. And I was just preaching beyond my body. My spirit could handle it, but my body could. And I went, took my Bible one night. And I have to say this real quick so, so I can get into the heavenly trip. And as I was reading my Bible, I always like to put a scripture in my mind before I go to sleep, let that work instead of some other junk going in there. Mm -hmm. And when I was reading the Bible and I looked up, there was an angel of the Lord. He didn't have wings, but he was a blonde-headed man, looked seven foot tall. Mm. It scared me. I, 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 I literally, you know, I, I jumped. And uh, he said, I have been sent of the Lord, and the Lord has commanded you to sleep. Now, I sleep on an average of four Five hours a night because I'm I got a lot of energy. <laughs> I literally the Bible, I looked at it and that's the last thing I remember. When I woke up twelve hours later, the Bible was on my chest. I felt like a million dollars. I mean, I was so rested. <laughs> this angel, and it was really a wonderful experience. I came home, told Kathy about it. Well, years later, I always wanted to see Jesus. You know, not just so I could believe that he existed. I just wanted to be his friend. Sure. I read that Abraham was a friend of God <laughs> and that God was no respected person. I said, well, Lord, can I be your friend? Sure. You know, and he said, sure. I said, well, I wouldn't mind. I'd like to talk to you. Well, in 1988, in August, I was preaching this meeting and the pastor picked me up for lunch. It was about 11.35 or something like that. He picked me up. We went to the, um, the restaurant, which was across the street from the hotel. We sat down, we ordered food, we talked a little bit. When the food came, Paul, and was put on the table, I'm not a rude man. I mean, I, 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 wanna, I, I believe in manners. My mama taught me to be polite. Yes. Make a long story short, I had this sudden urge, just sitting there, to go back to your room. Go, go back to your room. So I'm looking like this, and I, I, I was kind of like this. I, I just felt that, first I said, the man, I'm eating dinner, a lunch, and you know, you had all the thoughts, and I knew it was the Lord. Get back to your room now. Mm. So I told the pastor, I said, if you don't mind, I'd like to just go back to my room. He said, well, Brother Jesse, are you sick? I said, no, I'm not sick. Is something wrong? I said, no, I, I just have this compelling urge just to go back to my room. He said, I said, I'll see y'all tonight if that's okay. Left the food, literally, mm. I mean, the steam's coming off of it. Mm. I walked across the street into that Best Western Hotel. I closed the door, put the Do Not Disturb sign on. Now, what I'm about ready to say, you don't have to believe. But it's as true as, I, as I'm standing or sitting here. Mm. I closed that door and put that do not disturb sign, and I had this urge to pray. Jan, I knelt down just on the side of the bed. Now, I don't know whether I was in my body or out of my body, but I heard this And for a minute, I, I didn't quite open my eyes. I, I was sucked out of my room, just sucked out, and I was just going, I was going. And I went, oh, like this. I mean, the only way I can interpret that as not fear, but more close to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, just, and I realized I was, I was going at a phenomenal rate of speed. And all, when I opened my eyes, I was in this, it looks like a ski lift that was covered, you know, like a, a ski car, but nothing. And that angel that had talked to me years before smiled at me. So he said, you have an appointment with the Lord. Now I thought to myself, Oh, man. I mean, this is weird, you know, in myself. So we just, when I come out, this thing just stopped. When I come out, I've seen the prettiest place in my life. I have never, I can't tell you the colors of what heaven is. Give me uh, a little tiny word okay. picture. What? Well, when I came out, you got to watch what you say there. And I'll explain that. I went, I went, praise the Lord. I went, 
I, I did this. Praise God. And that angel said, the great God Jehovah, glory. That, I start praising God. Man, you just have a praise service. <laughs> if you say that, they're going to start praising God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I realized what was going on. And in my mind, in my theological mind, I thought the first person I would meet would be Peter, you know, at mm -hmm. the gate and all yeah, that kind of stuff. Right, right, right. I saw a man, thick barrel chest, huge, with a beautiful robe. He looked of great age, yet he looked young. Mm -hmm. But he looked of great age. And I looked at him and he said, hi, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Call me by my name. And I said, hello. He said, are you thirsty? I said, yeah. And he gave me some water out of it. looked like a golden goblet. And I said, who are you? And I, hang on, when y'all say, I'll let you check it in the Holy Spirit. You can believe you want, don't. He said, my name's Abraham, I'm your father. Abraham. See, he, oh, see we are the seed of Abraham. Yes. And I know, in my mind, I'm thinking Peter, gate. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, that's in the Bible, people. That's what's in the Bible, you know. And uh, he said, you have an appointment at the throne of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking around. This place is beautiful. He said, I want you to walk with me. Mm -hmm. Now, he's a thick barrel chested man. Now, I am freaking out. Uh, this angel's walking with us, this big, tall, blonde-headed angel. And, um, but he didn't have wings. Some do have wings, but mm -hmm. some don't. You know, it's all different types of mm -hmm. creatures there. Yes. Beautiful colors, the smell of God. I, I, I look for that smell everywhere I go. It, you can smell the fragrance of God in the air. Mm. So we went into this grass. This place is beautiful. There's nothing brown. It's beautiful colors. And the flowers, I went to step and I stopped for a minute and, and Abraham said, come on. I said, but I don't want, he said, just come on. <laughs> and when I stepped, I didn't step on the flower. They looked like they went through my legs. Yes. I mean, I, di I didn't bend them. You know what I'm saying? I didn't break it. Exactly what Dr. Eby tells and us. And I, I, now I don't even know Dr. Eby. I, yeah. I, I'm, Cause I don't talk much about this. Cause I said, Lord, ain't nobody gonna believe this. I just keep this to myself. That's why I'm a happy man. You understand? <laughs> you know? And when I did, thank you, when I did, when I passed, the flower turned oh, like this. Now, I didn't have eyes, but it just turned. <laughs> and I was walking, and I saw people walking. But the funniest thing, I saw this man come out of the same contraption. I came out another one, <laughs> and he looked around. He said, I made it. I made it. I made it. And he fell on the ground just, just shouting. You, you didn't know him. I had no idea who he was. <laughs> all and of I'm us. trying to stay around. <laughs> all of us. I'm trying to stay around looking at everything, you know, and, but they're moving me on. And I noticed there were no shadows, like we got shadows here on the floor here in the studio. So I asked the, I said, you're not casting a shadow. That angel said, God is light in whom there's no darkness, no shadow of turning. Mm. There's no darkness, nothing. There's no dark, no shadows. That amazed me. Yeah, that's in the word. You bet. It was amazing. And children, Jan, like I've never seen in my life, kids that would sing. And, I, and I'd say, wait, let me look at this. No, you have an appointment. <laughs> you have to go here. I'm thinking, I don't know what for, so I'm walking and walking, and i seen people with beautiful robes with top stitching. And then i seen people with a gown on, a beautiful gown, but the robe was way prettier, or uh, just thicker looking and prettier. And I couldn't figure that out. And as they was walking, I said, oh, is everybody going to the throne of God? He said, everyone has an appointment at the great throne of God, Jehovah. Mm -hmm. But then I noticed as some began to walk, they walked, they walked out of the line and went into where these trees were, and they would take leaves and do this. They would literally take the branches and smell them, but they're the ones with the gowns. Now, in my theological mind, I've always thought, come boldly to the throne of grace with mm -hmm. your petition and supplication. Bless God, you saved, you jump right into that throne. Well, that's true in one sense, but not in another, until I got back and studied and got into the Hebrew that God gives you a gown of salvation mm. and a robe of righteousness or right standing. Mm -hmm. And I asked that angel, I said, why are those have those gowns and these have these beautiful robes? See, because I thought, I'm seeing something that's not right here because of what I, you know, in, in the Bible. I and mean, I'm mm -hmm. checking scripture on this thing. <laughs> sure. I'm thinking, I don't know where I'm at. He said, those <laughs> did not live to the fullest of where they should have lived in God. They loved the Lord. But he said, the great God is merciful. Mm -hmm. He said, they will attain, they will come, but they would they would smell those leaves. I never forget that long as I ever lived. And he said, but, the, but those, someone that had those robes, some of them come out the machine looking things with those robes and they just take off straight to that throne. 
Oh. I mean, just take off. Then I realized that some people don't live to the fullest, but God still loves them. They know Jesus as you Lord. Know what? The Bible does teach there are different degrees that, that's of, re right. of reward. That is right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so as I was going, uh, I saw a man with a beard. It was a red beard, and about this wide. And uh, I looked, but I didn't know who he was. And all of a sudden, I heard people begin to say, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And then I realized it was coming. Jesus was coming out of that city. Ooh. Now, I saw him. He had a gold sash on his hair, about this wide. But his garment was not like everyone else's. Abraham's was beautiful. I thought I couldn't see anything prettier than that. Mm. But his looked like a billion diamonds with lights hitting it, coming out of it. Jesus. Now, when I saw that, he was coming toward me. I mean, you, you will not stand up in his presence. You're going to bite the dust. You're going down. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. Yes. You are going to go down. I fell. And I'm doing this in the short of the time. I fell at his feet. And in my mind, I always thought he had scars. But there's holes in his feet. They're this big. I didn't realize how big the nails were. If you people could see this, I could see the light. Mm -hmm. And he put his hand on this shoulder. And I'm getting the goosebumps mm -hmm. when I think about this. And um, mm -hmm. he, he picked me up. Just pick me up and he says, I brought you here to tell you something. And the people say, what did he look like? Glory comes from him, <laughs> brightness of light. I, I'm looking at that, whoo, it just shafts of light coming off of him. You know, kind of like, I don't know how to explain. I can say this in tongues, but it's <laughs> tough to say this in tongues. <laughs> uh, how do I get this, Lord, help me. Uh, just brilliance, just coming off of him. But he turned his head, and when he turned his head, his hair was light brown right here. I could see that his hair was brown, <laughs> brownish, you know. Mm -hmm. And yet, but when he would turn and look at you, it just like he could see right through you, but it was such brilliance coming out of him. So I, I'm looking at the glory mm -hmm. of who he is. Mm -hmm. He said, go tell my people I'm coming. I was a little disappointed, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't mean that in a rude sense. I thought he was going to give me some kind of big revelation or something, you know. <laughs> I said, Lord, they know that. And he got stern with me. He said, no, they don't. You go tell them I'm coming. Ooh. I'll never forget that. Ooh. Then Ooh. these kids, and he pointed me to this man with mm. the beard. He said, that's David over there. Mm. He will bring you around this city. And he did this. Oh, my. And I tell you, now, whether you believe it or not, <laughs> I'm freaking out. These kids run over and grab Jesus, and they sing songs. And I understand the scripture. Permit the children to come unto me, yes. for such is the kingdom yes. of God. Yes, yes, yes. There's no, let me tell you, and all these aborted babies, God don't lose any of them. Nice. You don't want them, God oh. takes them. You hear me? He takes them. Oh. You don't yeah. lose that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miscarriages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ain't your fault. Things, those things happen. He has, he, he has them. The thing that struck me when I got to the throne of God, I'm going over a lot of things. Souls. The difference between a spirit and a soul. Soul look about this big. The only way I can say that. They got the ability to fly. They look like they got little night gowns on. And they're, they're coming out of this power, this energy source. God, the throne, sounds like this. Whoa, whoa. I mean, if you just move, it annihilate everything. Mm -hmm. And then I really, I could hear these little voices. And they would fly into that smoke and that power. And they'd say, would you send me to the earth? Would you make me a spirit? Would you let me be a spirit? And then I realized that that's the souls, that God. And he went, and when he breathed, they just, boom, just flew out, sent to the earth souls. and made spirit. See, that's souls yet to be born. Yes. The, being, being born, put being into born. spirits. You yes. see, there's souls are the thoughts of God. The soul of man is the mind, the will, and the emotion. I know that from studying the Word. So God's thinking of these people, and they come out, his thoughts, and they, and they get in his face and say, make me a spirit. And when he breathes, and every time God breathed in the Bible, life came. Oh my God. I saw that. Jesse. It was the most amazing thing in my life. I fell down. I got so weak, I, and this angel gave me some it was like a piece of fruit. He said, eat this so you can withstand the glory of God. Mm. Mm. I, I asked this dumbest, stupidest question <laughs> anybody would ask in heaven. What? I've always been interested in the Trinity, you yeah. know, yeah. theologically, you know, because some people say it's not. No. I saw Jesus. I could not look at the Father. 
you're on the, you're on the ground. Mm, mm, mm. Out of this mass of energy and light, they're one, yet they're two. You could see Jesus like this. He comes out in human form, somebody we can touch. But then he'd go back into that mm. power and that smoke, mm. which was oh, Jehovah, Jesse. Elohim. Mm. But what I did see, I'll never forget this. And Jerry Savell, it, it, it shook him when I told him this. You know, you see in the scripture where the angels of God fly around the throne and said, the holy, 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 the great God. Let me tell you why they say that. They've been doing that for billions of years. Now, I don't mean this to sound funny, but it seemed like you get bored doing that after a while. Mm -hmm. You know, for just <laughs> century upon century. But every time them angels make a trip, they see a facet of God they've never, never seen before. before. This is the Infinite. God oh, we serve. Oh, 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 oh. This is the God oh, we yes serve. It. I thought, I, I'm get, man, I got goosebumps all down my leg. Y'all excuse me. I thought about R. W. Schambach. I'll never forget it. I heard Jesus. He came out of that power and smoke and power, and he he and it seemed like millions of people just thrown. You can all fit. And, you know, I thought Jesus was mild and would teach and talk softly. <laughs> Jesus is a preaching machine. Really? <laughs> he came out of there. He said, I'm going to get your brothers. And I saw him shake. I'm going to get your sisters. I'm going to get my body. And I went, glory to God, he's a preacher. I said, <laughs> and I said this, Brother Shambach, excuse me. I said, my God, he'll preach the socks off of Shambach. That's what I thought. <laughs> I literally thought that. <laughs> You know, you got to watch how you think because they can hear this. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the dumbest question, I'm trying to see, but I couldn't. That's why I think I was in my body because I couldn't. I had to eat something to get strength. I would get, we, I think if I was in my spirit, the Bible said you come boldly to the throne of grace, mm -hmm, that you can mm -hmm, withstand mm -hmm. that glory. I was interested. I said, that's the Father, even though that looked like a brilliance of light. And out of that light came a form called Jesus where he could talk. Mm -hmm. Then they would go back. There's mm -hmm. such a love there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I asked this angel, and I feel stupid when I think about it today. I bet they're talking about it now. That <laughs> dumb Jesse. I, tell you, I said, I understand this. Where's the Holy Spirit? I could see one, yet I could see two. They're two, yet they one, or three, yet they one. And that angel looked at me and said, he's on the earth. And I went, Oh, yeah, I know that. I know that. I, know that. <laughs> I felt so stupid. I didn't know. Because I was trying to dis be distinctive. You know yeah, what I'm saying? In yes, my, yes, in my yes. thinking. And Jesus said, take Jesse by the way of the mountains. He likes mountains. The thing that shocked me about heaven and the, and the surrounding areas of it, it looks a lot like earth. So I asked David, I said, this is a lot like earth. He said, well, earth is the Lord's taste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never he, thought about that. He made now. it, didn't he? Yeah, he said, well, <laughs> the earth is the Lord's taste. Yeah, yeah. And he created it perfect. Yeah. And I never thought about it like that. As we walked, I saw a man with a Bible like this, a little short fellow. A Bible. It, mm -hmm. it looked like a Bible. I don't, a book, it, anyway. Yes, books. And he was teaching about, oh, I guess 10 or 12 people. And um, I looked up like that, and he said, hello, Jesse. <laughs> and I said, hello. I said, who are you? And I, ladies and gentlemen, you, all I ask you to do is check the Holy Spirit. Why does I say this in your life? That's the only way I can tell you that. He said, I'm Paul. What are they saying about my gospel? He still called it his gospel. Whoa. And I told him that. I said, listen, I preach everything you say. Everything you say, I preach it. It's good stuff. I mean, just wonderful. You know? And he went back to teaching and smiled. And uh, they said, come on, there's many more things. And I, I saw a family... And I asked this angel, I said, this fam, they were going on a picnic. They said, would you like to go on a picnic? I wanted to go. I said, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, but that angel said, no, no, we, we have things to do. Mm -hmm. But I asked, who is that family? I don't know these people. He said, they were destroyed in an accident. He said, but the great God Jehovah is merciful. The whole family was together. Mm -hmm. They were going on this picnic. The 24 elders, I wanted to know if it was 12 Old Testament. 12 new, you know, theologically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I looked and saw them thrones, didn't see one of them. I asked the angel, I said, where are they? Where, 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 where them 24 elders? He said, we are servants here. They're ministering. We are servants here. We out ministering. 
all over, everywhere. Not just sitting on 12, yeah, not just 24 sitting there thrones. Huh? Angels dropping grapes in their mouth and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking servants. Yeah. He said, we are servants here. So I tried to do something for the angel, and he wouldn't let me. He said, no, no, you don't understand. We are servants here. Mm. Yeah. The babies, the things. See, in my mind, I thought, for lack of a better term, you think that when you go to heaven, you're like between 21 and 30, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, in, in that way of thinking, you know. Mm -hmm. the, 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 I, I saw this child, and I, I, I said, why? There are different ages. And what happens is, if you've lost a child, some of you listen to me, because this will help you. Let's say you lost a child. Uh, a, a baby died two, three years old, whatever, or abortion or a miscarriage or something. God don't lose that baby. Mm. What happens is that baby is going to be taught the oracles of God. Now, that baby wants to see you because you're its mother or its father. But if you live to be a fruitful, old, full age, that child will grow and be taught the oracles of God. If you lose a child and a year or two later you would go home to be with the Lord, you would teach that baby. Your own child. That's right. Oh, Jesse. Now, the thing I saw, this was Ooh. amazing. I come home, and I'm skipping over all this stuff. I came home, and I, I didn't tell this to Kathy for a week because I thought, God, they're going to think I'm crazy. Finally, I, I, I said, Kathy, come here. i got to tell you something. I sit down and just listen to me and pray as I talk and ask the Holy Spirit here what's going on. And that night, my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law came over, Deborah, Jules and Deborah Bouquet, and Deborah said, you know, I had a dream the other night that I was sitting in heaven with my, with my four kids. <laughs> she said, but, you know, I, I, after I got the real, I said, no, okay, I don't have four children. I have three children. And I said, no, Deborah, you have four. She said, no, I don't. I have Jules Jr., I have Julie, and I have Ryan. I said, no. I said, remember, you had a miscarriage. She said, yeah. I said, Deborah, sit down. <laughs> see, God don't lose that baby. She got four kids. Ooh. That child is waiting to see Deborah Ooh. and Jude. That proves something to me that I just wasn't space cadet in some way, you know. So, Jesse, apparently then, the, the main reason was for you to come back here and drive it home yes, hard. Sir. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ is He's coming. coming. That, is the, that was the reason for all of it going. I saw the gold streets, but I'll be honest with you, and I love it. Don't misunderstand me. I was interested in the people. Did he, people. did he, did he? Oh, I know there's no answer to this, but I always... Anybody coming back? <sighs> did he give you even a hint? As well, to, I'll tell you what I saw. I know we don't know the day. I'd it. settled for the year me or too. the decade uh, I would or too. for the century, you know? No, that was not spoken to me, but I can tell you this. Heaven is in a bustle moving. Something's about ready to happen. Really? I mean, it's, they're moving, man. They, something is coming down, like they say, you know. It's, it, it's, it's a very busy place, and I realized, and they kept moving me. They said, you must do this. The Lord was very stern about this. When I heard what Dr. Graham is doing, I was just preaching. I, I, I said, I'm going to give my offering to Dr. Graham, so my offering that I preached, I, I just sent it to him. I put it in the mail to him one night. <laughs> Because if we can get this gospel preached Around to the world, the world, then the next He'll phrase, come. the Lord will be in heaven. Yes, yes. The oh, next glory one. to God. You know, but I oh, did see the busyness. Yes. People are busy, and they're preparing for something. Now, Jesus didn't say that to me. I can't. He told me, go tell people, I, I'm coming, and I do that. And uh, the different people. I saw Moses, but I didn't talk to him from afar off, a very big man, great honor. It's amazing that the patriarchs, you can tell who they are, because of the honor that is bestowed upon certain people. Yeah. Like you said, there are different degrees there, but there's no jealousy there. Yeah. Everyone is servants. Yeah. I, I met Jonah. Jonah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, and I don't, this, for lack of a better term, by accident, I was walking down the street, and he said, hello. <laughs> and you know, it's amazing to me, everyone knew my name. Sure. You see, my name is Jesse Duplantis. Actually, my name is not Duplantis. I'm from the family of the planets. My name is Jesse. Yes. See, Jesus' name is Jesus. Yes. He's from the family of Elohim. Mm. Yes. Jehovah. But his name is Jesus. Yes. And it's a first name, basically, which makes it <laughs> nice <laughs> relationship. Yeah. And, and I just barely touched this. And, you know, coming over on the plane, 
I, I came prepared. I was going to preach because y'all always asked me, and I love to preach. But on the plane, I didn't know the doctor was going to be on tonight. I didn't I'd have a chance. In fact, I didn't even know y'all were hosting until I called Pam and found out y'all were hosting. I said, oh, praise God. And the Lord said, you're going to talk about heaven tonight. And I said, now, Lord, this is TBN. <laughs> this is worldwide. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. They're going to know I'm a fruitcake now if they hear all about this, you know. And uh, Kenneth Copeland told me, he said, share it with people only when the Spirit of God speaks it yes. to you. Because it's a Jesse. very... A sensitive thing. It's simply whosoever yes, sir. will. You know yes, what? Sir. You've got 10 minutes just to yeah. take that word and yeah, I can do that. wind it up <laughs> and pull in the net. I there mean, will be many that will believe this awesome testimony tonight. There will be some that will not. That's right. But it is whosoever, for whosoever shall call upon the name call. of the Lord. That is mm. so true, Paul. Mm. You know, I don't know why some people lie about things like this. I, it's too, it, I guess it's because the devil don't want you to know that this place is real. Sure. Uh, I ask you that what you've heard me speak tonight, you pray about it. And let the Holy Ghost touch you about it. You make your decision, make your choice. If you would call me and say, I don't believe that, I wouldn't get mad at you. By no means, because I've realized something. You, this has to be revealed to you. But there's a scripture in John 14, verse 3. It says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Mm -hmm. That's the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. And receive you unto myself. That's the reception of Jesus Christ. That where I am, there ye may be also. That's the reunion with Jesus Christ. And that one little verse, John 14, 3, is the return, the reception, and the reunion. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming. If God could save me, I know he could save you. <laughs> Glory. If God could do what he's done for me, you don't stop drinking a fifth of whiskey a day immediately. You don't get off of drugs immediately. It takes a God to do that. It takes someone that's not a metaphor, as the doctor said, but a person, mm. a reality. Amen. He said, I will come again. The return of Jesus Christ is connected with the Spirit's presence and power in the Christian church. Do you know what that means? Churches, Baptists, Methodists, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Church of God, Church of Christ, Assemblies of God, Word of Faith, Full Gospel, set our doctrinal differences aside. Let's do what Dr. Graham is teaching us. Yes. Let's come together in the unity of the faith and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ yes. and he'll come back. Amen. Amen. He'll come Amen. back Amen. if we come together. If we come together. He said, I will come again. Yes. That's his return. Now, I, we may have difference of belief in certain areas, but we're going to get that all fixed when we get to heaven anyway. Yes. Amen. You won't have to worry about that stuff. Jesus loves us all. He is coming back. And people say, maybe the reason why you're so happy or you're so full of joy is because you've seen that. No, no. Let me tell you what I'm full of joy for. The Lord, the blood of Jesus did not cover my sin. Because if it would have covered it, some of it could have popped through. The blood of Jesus washed my sin away, never to be remembered against me. I was finished. I was finished. God did a finished work in my life. Yes. He said, I will come again. That's why I preach so much. You know what I love about TBN? You have all different types of ministries on this network. And you know, some people say, why? You know, Brother Paul, why do y'all do that? You're doing what the Bible said. Yes. Sure, we may have different beliefs on certain areas. One man told me not long ago, he said, I don't believe in that rapture. I said, well, stay here. Yeah, amen. <laughs> I mean, you know, just stay. I love it. You know what I'm saying? But I do. I'm going out on the first floor. <laughs> me too. <laughs> and I'll meet you when you get there, man. Yes. But I'm going, see? But that. We're not, why spend time That's splitting hair over a doctorate yes. when there are people dying and going to hell? Oh, this me. doctor proved it tonight. I mean, this is a doctor, and people are screaming. Listen, hell is not a metaphor. I love that doctor. It's a place. Yes. Heaven is not some concocted dream. It's mm. a place. It's a reality. He said, I will come again. See, our salvation depends on something more stable than ours. Well, if he'll come again, he said, I'll receive you unto myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that blesses me because I had the Lord put his hand on my shoulder. That's the reception of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? You know, most people go, most people, if you're going to get married, they go to the reception instead of the wedding. 
<laughs> you ever notice that? Yeah. Why? That's where the food is. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. You know, that's the food. The reception is a place where you fellowship. He said, receive you unto myself. You learn to fellowship. There's a scripture in the Bible in Psalms 107, verse 2. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, Thanks. whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Before that was, when that was wrote, no one was redeemed as we were. No. What happened? That was wrote for you, the New Testament believer, that where I am, there you may be also. That means that's the reception, the reception of Jesus Christ. Then not only is the return there, not only is the reception there, but the reunion. The reunion means uninterrupted communication with Jesus. You know, Paul, I have a bad habit. Jan will probably testify to this. I'll say every woman listen to the sound of my voice. I don't know why. When I go out with my wife, or when we go out, I always call a couple or call a friend. I say, hey, y'all want to go somewhere? And Kathy asked me, she said, what's the matter? <laughs> you don't like going out with me? <laughs> and I said, oh, no, I love going But what are we going to do? Don't never say that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and I didn't mean that in the wrong sense. What she wanted was uninterrupted communication with me. Mm. I got a bad habit. Kathy's talking to me. I start walking in the other room while she's talking. Now, I hear her, but she don't believe it, but I hear her. <laughs> yeah, right. But that's rude of me. I should not do that. <laughs> what Jesus is saying is, on this return, on this reception, on this reunion, I want uninterrupted communication uh, with you. Yes, I want to love yes. you. I want to talk to you. And I want to tell you something about Jesus. If you're sick, something, things are going bad, he's a high priest touched. I love that word, touched but the feeling of our infirmity. Yes. The return, the reception, the reunion, that is awaiting us. But let me tell you something. I'm going to go back to the doctor. If you don't accept this Jesus, mm. you're going the other way. He said, I don't believe it. That don't change it. Amen. It's still a reality. Amen. It's not a metaphor. Hell's a place. Yeah. But if you'll accept Jesus, I pray, I've asked the Lord, God, bring other people to heaven. Let them experience this. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, I'm bringing them all. <laughs> They're coming. I'm going to get them all, all of them that love me and reach out yes, to me. Lord. Jesus is coming. I invite you to call today. TBN is a network that loves you. I love what Jan says. I, saw her, I turned television on the other night, and they were at the uh, Trinity City. She said, oh, I don't know if anybody told you lately, or maybe tonight, but I love you. Three very powerful words coming from the lips of God. We ask you to call today and accept Jesus Christ as Lord. There are people that will pray with you. They're here for you. This network is your network. It's to preach the gospel. It's linking up. And ladies and gentlemen, I really believe Jesus is coming in my lifetime. If I never see you in person here, I'll see you in heaven. That's a promise. I'll look for you. We'll have a praise the Lord show. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, we'll, have we'll have the ever. greatest time. You call and allow Jesus, and if it's okay, if I got just a second yes, to let me God. pray. Lead him in prayer. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that as people are watching and heard these, these, these things that were said oh, tonight, Jesus. that they'll reach out to you. Holy Spirit. That they don't have to fear hell because they will never go there if they accept heaven. Mm -hmm. So, Father, I ask you to forgive them of all their sin. Wash it all away like you did it for me. Let the purity of this gospel go as far as the pollution of their sin. God, clothe them with the righteousness of who you are. Yes, Lord. With salvation, which means soundness in its greatest definition. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the backslider. He's coming back. For sick people, Lord, I ask you to heal them. Because salvation means healing of the body as well as the spirit. So, Father, I ask you today to save those and minister life to and heal those in Jesus' name.